So my name is Rachel Covey, and I was in the group with Kevin Gorslin and Sarah Vanderwerf, and we did our presentation on alcohol use disorder. So alcohol use disorder is a pattern of alcohol abuse um, that involves problems controlling drinking due to a physical and emotional dependency on alcohol. There are many risk factors of this condition, and they include steady drinking over a long period of time, Starting drinking at an early age, and especially binge drinking at an early age, your family history is also a risk if you have family members who have struggled with alcohol abuse because this disease does have genetic factors. And then also those with anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder are at a higher risk. And then also those who have experienced any sort of trauma during their life. So to understand the cause, of this disorder, you need to understand how alcohol works and the effect that it has on the body. So alcohol is a depressant and a sedative that affects the central nervous system. So at first when you drink, you're gonna experience symptoms such as reduced fears, your mind is gonna be taken off your troubles, you're gonna feel less shy, have a boost in mood, feel more relaxed, and a lot of other results that are gonna be similar to that of an anti-anxiety medication or something like that. And all of these feelings are due to a rise in your blood alcohol content level or your BAC. So when that BAC level rises, you're going to start feeling those good feelings um, of excitement and stuff. But then as these levels fall, those feelings are going to change from positive feelings to feelings of depression, which can uh, cause people to go back and have another drink to raise those levels again so that their feeling can go back to happy. So you can see how that can lead to people drinking frequently and drinking more than they should so that their BAC levels can frequently be raised. Symptoms of somebody who may be struggling with an alcohol use disorder include being unable to limit the amount of alcohol they drink, feeling a strong frequent craving for alcohol. Um, they may fail to fulfill a lot of obligations in life, whether that be at work or at school or something like that. They will also most likely continue to drink alcohol even after they can see and that they know that it's been causing a lot of problems in their life, whether that's physical, social, or interpersonal. They'll also most likely use alcohol <clears throat> in a situation where it's not safe, such as when they're driving or swimming. They may also develop a tolerance for alcohol so that they need to continually drink more so that they can feel the same effects. And then they also experience withdrawal symptoms such as nausea or sweating or shaking whenever they don't drink, or they'll continue to drink so that they don't experience these symptoms. Um, if you suspect someone may be struggling from this disorder, you may also notice that they're very irritable and are having a lot of mood swings. And they may also isolate and distance themselves from those who they were once close with, like their family or friends. And they'll also probably make a lot of excuses as to why they drink, such as to relax, to deal with stress, or to make them feel more normal. To assess a patient, with this condition, you're first gonna to wanna to ask them a lot of questions and they'll probably have to fill out a questionnaire similar to one I have on the board that are gonna ask questions about how often they drink, if drinking has caused problems in their life, if they've ever run into problems with the police due to drinking and a lot of questions like that. And the doctor may also ask for permission to speak with the patient's friends or family just to see what they think about it and to hear their side of the story. And then they'll also ex go, <clears throat> they'll also do a physical exam to check for any physical signs that may indicate complications of alcohol use, and then also check the patient history to see if it runs in their family. So then the results of all these assessments are gonna help determine the diagnosis and the severity of the condition. So a little bit about why a person should seek treatment if they think that you're struggling from this disorder. Number one, it has a very big impact on safety. Those who are struggling with an alcohol use disorder are more at risk for being involved in a motor vehicle accident or another type of accidental injury, such as drowning. They also may experience relationship problems, have poor performance at work or at school. They're at an incre increased likelihood of being involved in a violent crime or being the victim of a violent crime. Um, they also may deal with problems with abusing other substances like drugs and they're at an increased risk, risk of attempted or even completed suicide. So not only does it impact safety, but it also impacts health. 
So you're at a higher risk of liver disease, digestive problems, heart problems that can be attributed to high blood pressure and enlarged heart, heart failure or stroke. You may also have diabetes complications. In women, it can lead to infertility as excessive drinking can interrupt a woman's menstrual cycle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as I was saying, women are at risk for infertility because excessive drinking can interrupt a woman's menstrual cycle, which leads to infertility. Then also, <clears throat> they're more at risk for neurological complications, a weakened immune system, and a risk of cancer such as mouth, throat, liver, esophagus, colon, or breast cancer. And this is um, a risk factor even for those who are only drinking moderately. And then lastly, some medications interact with alcohol and increase the alcohol's toxic effect. So if you drink while taking these medications, it can either increase or decrease the effectiveness of the medication, which can be very dangerous in some situations. So for treatment, the most important treatment is detox and withdrawal treatment. And this is a medically managed alcohol detox that limits the um, side effects of withdrawal that usually takes about two to seven days. And this is usually done at a hospital or an inpatient treatment center. Um, another important way to treat this is by treating the foundation of the problem. So like I mentioned, some things like depression and anxiety and other types of mental health conditions can be um, the reason that people struggle with an alcohol use disorder. So by treating those underlying problems with medications or therapy or stuff like that, it can help to treat the overall problem of an alcohol use disorder. And then also going to a support group can help people recover from an alcohol use disorder when they're surrounded by people who have been in their shoes and know what they're experiencing. And then lastly, for a serious alcohol use disorder, the patient may, be need, may need to be um, admitted to a residential treatment program where, the, where, they're, where they will have 24-7 access to professionals in dealing with these disorders. And they also have access to support groups and therapy and stuff like that. So the success rate of recovering from an alcohol use disorder is the greatest when a patient is admitted to a residential treatment program, but unfortunately only about 10% of people with an alcohol use disorder actually go and seek treatment, but of those people, about one third of them fully recover. So the average life expectancy for a man with an alcohol use disorder is 47 to 53, and for a woman it's 50 to 58, and that's due to all of these all the complications that I talked about previously that alcohol use can have on your health. So seeking treatment can add years to your life, so it's very important to seek treatment and to take it seriously. And the key to um, beating an alcohol use disorder is to surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you and help keep you on track with your treatment. So if you need any more information, these are the sources I used and you can look at them, otherwise you can ask me. Thank you.